So this afternoon, uh, our class has two parts. The first part is an introduction to mindfulness. So I call it the ABC of mindfulness. And then the second part is called the mindful body stretching. So the second part is more practical. And the first part is more on the theory. Okay. So the first part, uh, under the introduction to mindfulness, I'll be talking on the history of mindfulness, the benefits of mindfulness, and the definitions of uh, mindfulness. So it's going to be a bit theoretical, but please uh, uh, be patient with me throughout the program. Later, after the theory, we're going to have a lot, a lot of practical sessions. Since this is a big group, uh, uh, we'll be handling the Q&A session using the Slido system, which my co-host Jasmine will tell you more. Uh, because it's a big group, it's very difficult when everybody is asking questions. Uh, so in the Slido system, you can uh, either do a Google search, type slido.com, or just scan the QR code, and then you type T122, and then you can ask your questions. Yeah. So I won't be handling questions while I'm doing the sharing. I'll be handling the questions after the presentation. So you can submit your questions uh, through this Slido system. Uh, I won't be attending the questions through uh, questions submitted to the chat box. So we try to uh, get things organized, only Q&A through the Slido system. Okay. If you are not familiar with Slido, it's okay. Afterwards, at the end of this part one presentation, uh, Sister Jasmine will show you uh, step by step how to access it. Okay, mindfulness, mindfulness, mindfulness. So Mindful Gym program is based on the principles of uh, mindfulness. And mindfulness now is a very popular practice, very popular self-help method for stress reduction and wellness. There are hundreds of self-help books related to mindfulness. There's the mindfulness for dummies, mindfulness for idiots, and lots and lots and lots of other uh, books uh, related to mindfulness. Now, so now it's very popular. But where does this come from? Okay. The mindfulness, uh, mindfulness teaching actually comes from uh, various spiritual traditions. Right? It comes from various spiritual traditions, in particular Buddhism. Uh, in particular Buddhism, but not only restricted to Buddhism. It's also found in the traditional, uh, traditional Christianity in the form of contemplation. It's found in certain, uh, certain sects of, uh, of uh, Islam, uh, a sect called uh, Sufism. Of course, it's found in, uh, in uh, Hinduism as well. So the root, the origin is from spiritual tradition. My friends, although very popular these days, it is not new. It has been there for hundreds of years, but in the form of uh, spiritual tradition, uh, especially uh, Buddhism. So those days, when people want to learn mindfulness, it has to be in the form of spiritual tradition. People have to go to learn from the monks and nuns. People have to learn from the ashram. People have to learn from the sages who live in the mountain or in cave. Yeah, that's the origin. That is the root. Uh, then how did mindfulness became so popular? Okay, Bec mindfulness became very popular due to this uh, person by the name Dr. John Kabat-Zinn. So we consider him as the father of modern mindfulness. Now, why is he called the father of modern mindfulness? Uh, it's because he's the first person who introduced circular mindfulness. Uh, circular mindfulness means uh, non-religious, non-spiritual, no prayers, no rites and rituals. And actually, Dr. John kabat invented the first circular mindfulness program in the world known as the MBSR, also known as the Mindfulness uh, mindfulness based stress reduction program, or in short, is MB, MBSL. He actually started this program in 1970s, and he's actually a professor in the UC of Massachusetts Medical School, US. So, this movement was started in the US, and he first applied uh, use mindfulness MBSL to help his patients who are suffering from physical conditions like chronic pain and psoriasis. Uh, that's how the circular mindfulness movement started in the form of MBSR by Dr. John Kabat-Zinn 
for physical uh, disorders. So one of the classes that he started, MBA style, he started one of the early classes. It was of people suffering from psoriasis. Uh, psoriasis is actually a very, uh, very stubborn skin. It means, uh, it means very stubborn. Now means cow, pay means a cow skin. Uh, basically, it means that it's a very, very stubborn uh, uh, skin condition. And it's found that uh, those participants who attended, attended the eight-week uh, MBSR program, uh, uh, the skin condition actually cleared three times faster compared to the usual uh, treatment. Mm. Mm. And since the 1970s, MBSR by Dr. John Kabazik, there has been numerous scientific research, lots and lots of scientific papers to support the effectiveness of mindfulness practice for reducing stress, anxiety, and depression. For your information, it's actually a mindfulness journal, a scientific mindfulness journal dedicated for scientific publications uh, on, on mindfulness. Uh, so there have been lots and lots of scientific uh, research. So I'd like to bring you through just a few, just to highlight a few of the scientific studies. No time to go through all, uh, just to highlight to you a few. Okay. One of the interesting scientific studies uh, uh, is on the effect of mindfulness uh, practice on brain changes, on, on uh, brain changes. As we've shown that mindfulness practice associates positive brain changes. And one of the positive brain changes uh, is mindfulness reduces the amygdala activity uh, in the brain. The amygdala in the brain is responsible for anger and if we practice mindfulness, it can help us to reduce anger, reduce uh, anxiety. Mindfulness practice has also shown to uh, increase the alpha and theta brain wave. And this is important because the alpha and theta brain wave, they are associated with uh, relaxation. Mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness practice has also uh, shown to uh, increase the activity of the prefrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate uh, cortex activity in the brain. And uh, these are the, the brain structures which are uh, involved in attention training. Uh, so this explains why mindfulness uh, training uh, improves attention. Okay. This is a scientific review on the mindfulness practice. It's shown that uh, mindfulness practice can help to reduce anxiety, reduce depression, and reduce stress. That was the earlier study. There's another one, a bit uh, another review. This was done in, uh, a little bit later. This was in 2015. Again, it's been shown that mindfulness training in the form of mindfulness-based stress reduction and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And this mindfulness-based therapy have been shown to elevate symptoms, both mental and physical, in the adjunct treatment of cancer, cardiovascular disease, chronic pain, depression, anxiety disorder, and the prevention, uh, in prevention in healthy adults and uh, children. So there are lots and lots of scientific uh, studies. One more recent, this one, this study uh, came out quite recent in just 2018, another scientific review. It shows that mindfulness practice, mindfulness intervention are useful for psychiatric disorders. And the authors of this scientific report, they show that the most consistent evidence for mindfulness-based intervention was seen for people with depression, pain, smoking, and uh, addiction. Yeah. So lots and lots of scientific studies. Yeah. So I'm not sure uh, why you sign up for this program. Uh, I'm sure you have a reason. And these are the possible benefits that you can gain from the, the mindfulness training. Okay, so the things, the benefits you can get are improved productivity and creativity, greater concentration and memory, better sleep and ability to relax, uh, relief from stress-related bodily symptoms like headache, gastric pain, enhance mood and positive emotion, and to improve interpersonal relationships. Uh, all these are supported by scientific uh, studies. 
I also supported by my own uh, personal practice and also my clinical experience. Yeah. However, I would like to highlight, uh, although there are a lot, a lot, a lot of studies to show that mindfulness practice is good, uh, it's only good if we practice. So it's very important to ensure that we practice. Uh, so we have designed this program uh, so that it's practical. So in the part two of this afternoon the session, we will show you the, uh, the practice. It's important to practice on a daily ba basis, share your experience, ask questions. If there are any, any doubts, uh, please clarify your doubts, ask questions, be discussed. And uh, this is the only way that we ensure that we benefit from the mindfulness practice. One very important reminder, uh, I know some of you are on treatment for medical and mental health conditions. Uh, very important reminder, please do not stop your medications if you're on treatment for any medical or mental health uh, conditions. I'm a doctor myself, I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, when we say mindfulness practice is good, it doesn't mean we abandon the medication. In fact, studies have shown that for the best effect, the best effect uh, comes from combinations of mindfulness practice plus counseling therapy plus medication. Then we can have the maximum effect. Uh, so please don't go home or please don't leave this class with the, with the wrong impression that I'm trying to replace some medication. No, uh, the, the purpose of mindfulness training is to complement your treatment, is not to replace your treatment. Okay, I have talked about the history and benefits of mindfulness. Let's recap a little bit. Uh, historically, I mentioned mindfulness comes from spiritual tradition. It's been there for hundreds of years in various spiritual tradition, especially Buddhism. Then it brought into the circular world by Dr. John kabat a professor of medicine from the University of Massachusetts Medical School in the form of MBSR which was initially found to be helpful for people with chronic pain and psoriasis. Then later, there's a lots and lots of uh, scientific uh, uh, studies. Uh, and for your information, the mindful gene program that you're attending now is actually adapted from the MBSR program, but adapted and scientifically tested in the local population. Uh, so some of you, I think one of the commonly asked questions like, What's the difference between MBSR by Dr. John kabat and the Mindful Gym program that I'm running? So the difference is Mindful Gym is Buatan Malaysia. It's adapted from the MBS MBSR, adapted and scientifically tested in the local population. And so far, we have more than 10 scientific studies to show that Mindful Gym is useful, useful for the local population to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. Okay. In terms of benefits, I review lots and lots of uh, scientific studies. Uh, now the more important part, uh, we'll go on the definition. Uh, definition. So what is mindfulness? We talk about the history, we talk about benefits. Let's uh, dive in into the definition. Uh, remember just now I said that mindfulness comes from various spiritual tradition, especially in Buddhism. Okay. In, in Buddhism, the word for mindfulness is sati. Uh, the, 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 language used, uh, the language used in Buddhism, the original language is called a Pali language. So this is a Pali word of sati, which is the original word in Pali used to describe mindfulness. So this comes from the Wikipedia. Yeah, sati has many translations, and the one of the most common translation in English is mindfulness. So sati is mindfulness. Sati in Pali, in the Buddhist tradition, is mindfulness. So what is it called in Chinese? Okay, in Chinese, if you do a Google translation, uh, mindfulness is actually zhen nian, zhen nian. Uh, so that is Chinese word. Uh, remember this word, nian. Uh, later, we're going to have a slide which we're going to elaborate more on that. Yeah. How about in, uh, in Malay, in Bahasa Melayu, we are in Malaysia, Bahasa, 
in Bahasa Melayu, what do you think is the word? Uh, what is the translation uh, for mindfulness? Yeah. Uh, this is a translation for mindfulness. Uh, the Malay word for mindfulness is Minda Katara Sada. In Chinese is Zhenyan. In Pali is Sati. So this is the term used by uh, Ikim. Do you know what is Ikim? Ikim is the Institute for Kefahaman Islam Malaysia. As I shared with you earlier, mindfulness disease is very, very popular. Uh, uh, Ikim, Institute of Kefahaman Islam Malaysia is also running uh, talks and seminars on and off uh, on mindfulness from a Muslim perspective. Let's see what does the dictionary uh, say about mindfulness. Okay, if you do a, a search in the dictionary, uh, the online Oxford and Cambridge, uh, uh, the first definition is say the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. Uh, so I would like to highlight to you uh, in, in the general English usage, the word uh, mindfulness, the meaning is a bit different from the meaning of mindfulness as in mindfulness therapy or mindfulness program. Uh, in our daily usage, uh, we use the, mind, the word mindfulness to mean be aware, uh, be, be aware or be conscious. For example, you hear people say, uh, be mindful of your steps, uh, mindful of your steps, be mindful that they don't hit your head, or be mindful of the economy, uh, be mindful of the political, uh, political uh, situation. Uh, that is a general usage of the word uh, mindfulness. Uh, however, in the MBSR, in mindful gym, the meaning is more specific. Uh, this is a very important point. Uh, the meaning of mindfulness in MBSR, mindful gene is a bit more specific. Okay, so let's zoom into the real definition of mindfulness. All those are just the uh, uh, historical definition. Let's zoom into the actual definition as used in the MBSR program and in the mindful gene program. Yeah, so I will show you the one used in the MBSR program, the one pioneered by Dr. John Kabazi. Afterward, I will show you the mindful gym uh, version. Yeah. So Dr. John Kabazi defines mindfulness as paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So this is the definition by Dr. John Kabazi, the father of modern mindfulness. In the the MBSA program. Yeah. In the mindful gene program, we don't follow this definition. Uh, we, I've, I've done some modification, but it's still related by some done some modi modification. The next slide, you will see the definitions of mindfulness as in the mindful gene program. Ah, okay. So this is the definitions of mindfulness in the mindful gene program. Okay, so this is a very, very, very important slide. Yeah, I'm going to read to you the, uh, the definition of mindfulness and try to remember this definition by heart. Because uh, after this, we're going to have, we're going to share with you many mindful gym, mindful gym exercises. And all the exercises are based on the principles of mindfulness as defined in this slide. To pay attention to the present moment with an attitude of kindness, a beginner's mind, and wisdom. Yeah. In the in the in the actual group in person my uh, my fujin program, uh, I will ask all participants to remember this definition by heart, and will ask I will test each participant to see whether they can remember or not. But in Zoom, it's a bit difficult to do that. So I trust you will try your best to remember this uh, definition. Yeah? Okay. If you don't understand the meaning, it's okay. I will, I will help you to go through line by line and uh, word by word. Okay. So mindfulness is paying attention. Mindfulness is an attention training. Mindfulness is not making the mind blank. A lot of people have this wrong, uh, wrong uh, understanding of mindfulness. 
they, they think mindfulness is making the mind blank. This is not true. Mindfulness is a very active process of paying attention. So mindfulness is paying attention. It's related to something that we went through when we were in school days. I still remember during our school days, teachers always say, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. It's the same word. So mindfulness is pay attention. Uh, the only difference is in school, teachers always tell us to pay attention, but teachers don't really spend time teaching us how to pay attention. But in the Mindful Gym program, we've shared with you many, many strategies, many, many methods and ways to sharpen our attention. So far so good. So mindfulness is attention training. Mindfulness is paying attention and Mindful Gym teaches us on how to pay attention. Pay attention to what you may say, right? Is it pay attention to the music, pay attention to uh, YouTube video, what do we pay attention to? If you still remember the definition, is specifically paying attention to the present moment for now. That's why you see the earlier definition is paying attention to the present moment, uh, the now. Okay, you look at this uh, Chinese character, uh, Chinese character of Nian, Zhen Nian, you can actually divide these two characters. Uh, there are two sub characters. So the top part means now, and the bottom part means the heart, or in Chinese, is sing, the heart. Okay. Uh, so this is a very, very nice way to remind us that mindfulness is not just paying attention, it's paying attention in the now, in the present moment. Okay. I hope so far, so good. Uh, if you have questions, keep your questions. I'm sure some of you have questions. Uh, keep it for the Q&A sessions uh, so that we can have a, a better understanding later when you ask questions. Uh, so mindfulness is paying attention in the present moment. In the Mindful Gym class, uh, the actual class, uh, uh, I will randomly ask a participant and going to ask, what is the time now? Then you look at the clock. So it is uh, uh, three, uh, three ten now. Okay. So in the Mindful Gym class, uh, whenever I ask about the time now, it's actually a trick question uh, because the 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 answer to the question of what is the time now, the answer is now, the present moment. Now, the present moment is to emphasize that mindfulness is about paying attention in the present moment. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's recap the definition. Mindfulness means remembering to pay attention to the present moment with the attitude of kindness, beginner's mind, and wisdom. Okay, so in Mindful Gym, we have these four hours. Four hours, or uh, you can imagine there are some, they are like the angels of the Mindful Gym program. Uh, because the angel, because they remind us of the principles of mindfulness. Okay, the first one is our attention. We have gone through that. Uh, mindfulness is paying attention. Okay, but mindfulness is not just attention; it's also a kind attention, a uh, kind attention. So there is a kindness component. Yeah. So we pay attention. The, the things we pay attention to can be the attention part. The attention can be external attention. Something that we hear. Something that we see. Uh, those are external, paying attention to something external, or we can pay attention to something internal. Internal are things like our thoughts, our feeling, our emotions, our body sensation. All those are under attention. Yeah. It's not only attention, it's kind attention. For example, we pay attention to our bodily, our body, and we have to pay attention with kindness. With kindness means we care, with gratitude, with respect. It is very important. Because uh, sometimes when people pay attention, it's the wrong type of attention. It's not a kind of attention. For instance, a lot of people when pay attention, they pay attention to the faults. They find faults in life. They find faults and problems with themselves. Uh, is that attention? Well, there's attention, but it's not a kind of attention. Hmm? Then 
the third part of definition is not just attention, it's beginner's mind attention. Okay, what does beginner's mind attention mean? Okay, uh, later, I'm going to share with you an exercise called the mindful body stretching. And then when after the, the practice, a beginner's mind attention that means we encourage you to go back and practice and we go back and practice, we encourage you to modify, make and match. Beginner means being, uh, be curious, uh, be playful, be adventurous, to try it out different, different ways. So when we introduce certain exercise, for example, the mindful body stretching, we don't expect you to follow exactly as the way we teach you in the mindful gym program. We hope you can go back and try. Try it out, you modify. Modify means uh, we, we teach you in this way, but we encourage you to modify it. Uh, adapt it, modify it. We also encourage you to mix. For example, you, you may have some basics in, uh, in uh, Qigong, or you also learn a little bit of yoga. So feel free to mix with uh, the other practice, uh, mix, and then match according to your needs. Because uh, not everybody joining the Mindful Gym program for the same purpose. Some are joining this program because you cannot sleep. Some are joining this program for, for stress and anxiety. Some are for depression. And they are very, very busy. So feel free to uh, be curious, apply beginner's mind, modify, mix, and match. Okay? And then the last part of the definition is wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, wisdom means understand your condition. As I mentioned later, we, are, we join the Mindful Gym program with uh, different, different reasons. So we got to understand our condition. Uh, for example, if, if you are having panic attack, if you are trying to apply Mindful Gym program or mindfulness practice for panic attack, you have to understand the nature of panic attack. Then you have to understand how you can apply the mindfulness technique uh, in your situation in a, uh, for panic attack. So this is what I mean by wisdom. So it's not just attention, it's wise attention. So you put all together, mindfulness means remembering to pay attention to the present moment. The now, with an attitude of kindness, a beginner's mind, and wisdom. Yeah. So far, it's still theory. If some of you, you still find it difficult to understand, it's okay. Later, when we have the, the, the exercise, the practical session, it will be easier for you to understand. Okay, uh, so I have uh, explained to you the definitions of uh, mindfulness. Although I share with you various definitions, the, the one that you really need to remember is the one that we use in the Mindful Gym program. The rest are just, just for you to have a better understanding of the root and also the origin by Kabazing. But for practical purpose, just remember the last one. Huh? Remembering to pay attention the present moment, the kindness, the beginner's mind, and wisdom. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, mindful gym. What is mindful gym? Mindful gym is the Malaysian version of the MBSR. Yeah. So I started the mindfulness, uh, the mindful gym program about ten years ago, uh, around two thousand ten. I first started this uh, the practice. The, the, the class among uh, the UPM medical student. I was previously lecturing in the UPM medical school. I noticed that the medical students were all very, very stressed out. Uh, so that's why I introduced the program. This was about 10 years ago. And uh, since then, I have uh, introduced Mindful Gym to various population, various groups of people. Uh, for example, I introduced Mindful Gym uh, among school teachers, among patients with cancer, among patients with anxiety and depression. I did work, uh, organize my food gym in, uh, among healthcare professionals, among nurses, uh, also in the corporate group as well. Uh, I also introduced mindfulness in various organizations. So the, the, in the corporate world, it, uh, people are realize that people are very stressed out. Uh, actually it reduces the productivity. So it's important to have a, a mindful gym, mindfulness practice to help staff to reduce stress and increase the productivity. Yeah. So this year I have a few invitations. Uh, one invitation I have is to run the mindful gym program among doctors. I'm going to run mindful gym in Kulantan and Trangano. I also have one invitation to run the mindful gym program for 
ก็ counselors ก็ counselors okay so that is the an introduction a very brief introduction on mindfulness the history the benefits and the history benefits and the definition yeah so now I will pause here uh, for you to ask uh, questions yeah Okay, so for the uh, Q&A session, which I think is very important, sometimes it's a one-way one lecture, uh, it's not effective. Uh, I think it's important for you to ask questions, for you to clarify, for us to discuss, to enhance your understanding of the, the, the basic concept and meaning and practice of mindfulness. Yeah, so for the, the Q&A session, we will be using the Slido system. Uh. Mm. Okay. Sorry, please enter your questions here. Mm. Uh, and then after you have uh, type your question, you just click send. Can you just type, at least just show. I practice. body stretching just in the morning only mm. this is my Sorry, question. Yeah. I practice my full body stretching just in the morning this is my questions mm. that I send okay so my question will be appear on the screen here. Mm. Okay, these are the questions, uh, 20 questions that we have collected in this uh, slido.com. Uh, slido so Dr. Pa, how do you want me to uh, assist you on this? Ah, very good. Ah, uh, yeah, so we'll try out this Slido system. Mm. So I suggest uh, Jasmine, you will read you will read the question. Mm. Uh, so you select, you read the question. Okay. And I will try to answer online. Okay. So uh, I will take the highest. So we try out this method. Ah, uh, I will take the higher okay. pause first. Okay. So Let's just try mm. these questions. Mm. Is mindful gym mm. suitable for kids? Okay, good. Yes, mindful gym is suitable for kids, definitely. Uh, later, as you go through the exercises, you, uh, you, you know for yourself, actually those exercises are very simple. And some of the exercises are a lot of fun as well. Yeah, so it can be easily practiced, suitable for kids. Uh, on top of the mindful gym uh, based exercises, we also link you to the other programs in the world. There are other programs in the world which are specifically for, for kids. Uh, for example, the uh, Jasmine and I actually attended a program. What's the name of the program, Jasmine? Okay. Uh, dot B. Okay, there's a program called Dot B. Uh, dot B Mindfulness Program which is uh, uh, specifically for, for children and adolescents. Yeah, yeah. So the answer, yes, mindful gym is suitable for kids, and there are also other uh, mindfulness program in the world specifically designed for kids. Uh, we shall give you the link later. Uh, example, the dot B program. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Pang. So this okay, answer next, yes. answered. Okay. The next question is: yeah. Is mindfulness helpful for all age group, or particularly useful for certain age group? Uh, it's useful for all age group, all age group. Mm. So the beauty of the, the mindful gym program is like this. Uh, 
uh, or mindful gym tools. So the term we use, we call it the mindful gym tools. We have a variety of tools, a variety of methods. Some are more suitable for elderly, some are uh, more suitable for adults, some are more suitable for children. And uh, another beauty of the program is the exercises can be adapted. Remember one of the principles is beginner's mind. Modify. Uh, next one, which one? Okay, next one. Is uh, mindfulness atten attainable only through meditation? Ah, good question. Okay. Meditation is only one of the many ways to practice mindfulness. Uh, meditation is only one of the many ways to practice mindfulness. There are many, many, many other ways to practice mindfulness. Uh, th this is a very important distinction, uh, very important difference between mindfulness meditation and mindfulness practice. So mindfulness meditation is only one of the many mindfulness uh, practice. Uh, so there are many we're going to introduce. Of course, this afternoon, the, the second part of this uh, afternoon's class, we're going to introduce to you mindful body stretching. And there are a lot more mindful breathing. There's the body scan exercise, the five mindful vitamins, uh, the butterfly hug, the Google wet room well. There are many, 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 many exercises. To all based on mindfulness and meditation is only one of them. Uh, we are not going to cover meditation under part one. Uh, so part one has four lessons. We only cover meditation in part two later. Uh, so I hope that's clear. Very good question. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Next. Um, next question. I have poor sleep worry thing how to sleep after practicing mindfulness regularly, but my insomnia not improving. Any Opinions or suggestions from Dr. Pang? Mm, good. My suggestion is uh, try to combine different mindful gym practice. Uh, because you mentioned uh, after practicing mindfulness regularly, I'm not sure which mindfulness practice you are referring to. Uh, as, as mentioned earlier, mindfulness is not one practice. Mindfulness, there are many, 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 many practices. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I strongly suggest that you go, go through the entire mindful gym program and try to combine the different mindfulness practice, not just one. Uh, so one maybe is not, uh, uh, is not powerful enough, you know. You need more than one method so that the practice become more kao kao. You know? So I use the word kao kao, uh, more potent, more, pow more powerful. Uh, and by the way, I have uh, come out with, uh, actually written an article specifically on mindful gym for insomnia. Specifically, mindful gym for insomnia. So the group we are participating now is, is very general for stress reduction and wellness. Uh, so if, if you are applying specifically on mindfulness, uh, through our email or the telegram, uh, telegram, I will forward you to link on my footing specifically for insomnia. Uh, so I written an article on it. I actually compiled a my footing playlist on all the uh, all the my footing exercises which are uh, useful for insomnia. Okay, okay. thanks, yeah. Doctor Pang. Mm. The next message is what's the difference between the my footing and the Buddhist way of meditation? Ah, very good. Uh, this one was uh, partly answered yes. uh, earlier. Yes. Um, meditation, meditation is one of the ways to practice mindfulness. Uh, so mindful gene program is based on the principles of mindfulness. Uh, mindful gene program is based on the principle of mindfulness, and mindfulness originated from various spiritual tradition, especially Buddhism. Uh, mindful gene is circular. There is no religious uh, component. Uh, but it's still related to meditation. It's related to meditation, but it's not exactly the same as meditation. Uh, maybe another way of looking at it is you can imagine mindfulness is like sports. Mindfulness is like sports. Uh, in sports, uh, there are many, many types of sports. Uh, you've got badminton, you've got ping pong, you've got basketball. There are many, many uh, types of sports. 
Uh, so meditation is only one of the method. Uh, so that's the answer. Uh, yeah. So Dr. Pa, are you ready for the next questions? And one more different. One more, different. One more just for the end. Uh. Okay, the mindful gene program is for stress reduction and wellness. So very specifically, it's, it's for circular purpose, it's for stress reduction and wellness. Whereas the, the mindfulness meditation is for spiritual purpose, is for enlightenment. Uh, so make sure you're attending the correct class. If you're aiming for spiritual enlightenment, uh, to be awakened, to become a Buddha, to, to attain the jhanas, uh, this is not the right course because my Fuji is for circular purpose, for stress reduction, wellness, uh, good health. Okay, next one. Can mindfulness apply in mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety? If yes, how does mindfulness help? Please. <laughs> Answer is yes. The how if you have, you have to join the entire program. Uh, definitely yes. Yes, it's helpful for anxiety and depressive disorder. And this is supported by scientific study, supported by personal experience, supported by clinical experience. Definitely yes. A big yes. Okay. All right. How the patient uh, to join part one. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Fang. Mm. Uh, the next question: how to exactly use mindfulness for concentration when one's mind is everywhere impacted by external circumstances. Ah. Ah. Mm, so, okay, I'm I'm muted again. Yeah. How to use mindfulness? How exactly to use okay. mindfulness? Uh, yes. Mind is scattered. Good. Very good question. Yeah. So we have a lot of mindfulness, mindful gym exercises. We call mindful gym tools that we're going to share with you afterwards. Yeah. So why will I share with you in, in part one today is just the theory part. Uh, the theory. We're going to have a lot of practicals. We have at least 12 mindful gym tools. At least. At least 12 mindful gym tools, uh, exercises to help you to calm down, help you to concentrate, help you to be less distracted. Yeah, so coming soon, coming soon, uh, coming soon. Yeah, okay. good, thanks. thanks. Hmm. Is it possible that some people feeling bad after doing mindfulness? Yes, possible, that is very normal. Uh, that's, why in the, that's why we need to be coached and this is one of the reasons why I, I call my program called Mindful Gym. Just that when we go to gym, we need a coach. If we simply gym, sometimes we can get injury you know, in the gym. Simply gym, we can get injury. So we need to get a coach. So we are here to coach you. I'm here to coach you. Uh, but you have to help me to coach you. Like. You have to practice. Uh, practice, practice, you have to practice. Then uh, find out what are the challenges. Then uh, discuss with us. We also uh, we're gonna invite the past participants. You know, past participants, those who have graduated from the program. As I as I say, I'm running this program for the last ten years. So we have a lot of graduates. Uh, uh, so they will come back to share with you uh, to coach you. Ah, uh, uh, then you can troubleshoot your challenges. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pang. Okay, I think this one pretty fast. Uh, Dr. Bang, uh, doctor didn't mention a beginner's mind and wisdom after we learn from the practice when we still carry a beginner's mind. Hope doctor elaborate more details. Uh, beginner's mind, beginner's mind means with a curious mind. A uh, curious mind. Uh, for example, as I said, afterwards, right after this, I'm going to teach you a mindful gym exercise called mindful body stretching. It is very good for relaxing the body, reducing body ache. Uh, beginner's mind means after learning, you to go back and try. Try, modify it, see which part work, which part doesn't work. Okay, the part that work, good, rejoice on it. The part that doesn't work, you come back and discuss with us. 
uh, then we will coach you and you modify the method. So there's a meaning of beginner's fine. Go and try, be adventurous. Uh, Vista means apply in your situation. Okay, that same too, mindful body stretching, but, but what, you want to use it for what situation? Is it, are you using it for insomnia? Are you using it for body ache? Are you using it for anxiety? Are you using anger? Next. Okay. Next. Okay, the other one, in your opinion, why do we need the specific mindfulness setting or framework for Malaysian? Uh, why nation? So there are some cultural differences. Uh, some cultural the differences uh, uh, that we have to take in consideration. Okay, comparing the MBSR and the micro gym program. Uh, okay, for example, uh, in the MBSR program, they use a lot of poems. They recite a lot of poems. Uh, so I noticed in the Malaysian setting, uh, a, a bit a bit difficult to use poems for teaching purpose. Uh, so I find that not everybody appreciates poems. Uh, so I replaced the poems with stories. So in the Mindful Gym program, we tell a lot of stories. Hmm? Another setting is in the MBSR program, they have yoga. They actually explicitly teach yoga, uh, which may not be culturally appropriate uh, in the Malaysian setting for a certain part of the population. All right. Hmm. How many more questions do you have? Uh, one, two, three. Question is it? Uh, hold on now. Four, five, six. There are six. Okay, my suggestion is sometimes it's easier to attend to those questions after we learn the practical part. Hmm. Mm. So I suggest we move on with the second part of this afternoon's uh, lesson, part two, which is the mindful body stretching. And then we come back to the questions. Mm. I think it's better in that way. Okay. So welcome back to mindful gym class, lesson one, part two. Ah, now we're going to have the practical part. So the earlier part, uh, a lot of theory about the history, the definition, the philosophies, the principles. Ah, now we go to practical. I think it's easier when we have practical, then we apply the principles easier to understand. Yeah. So as I mentioned, the man, uh, in my gym is like attending a gym. Just like you go to a gym, uh, there are many, many, many tools in the gym for us to work out. Yeah. So my food gym also got many, many tools. So the first tool that we're going to share with you is called the mindful body stretching. Mm. This tool is very good for relaxing the body by paying mindful attention to body stretching. Uh, remember, in every exercise, mindfulness-based exercise, there is always an attention component. So now the focus in this exercise, the attention is on our bodily sensations, the tensing and relaxing of the different parts of the body. So in mindful body stretching, there are 10 postures. Uh, basically, there are 10 postures of tensing and relaxing different parts of the body. And what are the indications of mindful body stretching? So when is it useful? Okay. Yeah, many, many uses of uh, mindful body stretching. The one I highlight in red are the more, the more common one. Uh, it's very good to reduce muscular tension. Uh, very good uh, to when you have sumo sake, all the body aches, uh, body tension, body aches. In fact, that is one of the very common symptoms uh, of uh, stress and anxiety you get. Sakit, sakit badan, pain all over the body. Yeah. Uh, also for chest tightness, breathing difficulty. Yeah. So this is uh, particularly good for muscular tension, tightness, uh, and all the sakit, sakit in the, in the body. 
I'm going to show you a demonstration. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the mindful body stretching in a, in a video. It's about a 10 minutes video. Uh, we are going to show you now. In case you can't view, there's also a link to the, there's also, we actually uploaded it in the YouTube, in the Mindful Gym YouTube uh, channel. You can have the QR code and also the link. Yeah, so in case, due to whatever reason, you can't see it in the Zoom room, uh, you have another alternative way to access to it. Yeah. Okay. So I have the video here, it's about, about 10 minutes, how to, how is, how is uh, done. And if any question, please, please, we encourage you to ask question. Uh, not, not while the video is playing, after this, after this, uh, uh, submit your question to Slido. I'm happy to attend to all your questions related to the mindful body stretching practice. Okay, so if you're ready. Squeezing oranges for oranges. Bring your awareness to the tightness and tension around the fist. And we shall count from 1 to 10 together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now, let go of the fist, shake the hands, and feel the weight of relaxation. And that's good. And that's considered one round. Let's do the second half. Choose another fruit. And choose any fruit except the durian, as it's very painful and stressful. You like to choose the lemon. So hold your face like you need. Imagine squeezing lemon or lemon juice. You can even imagine smelling the lemon. Okay, ready? Hold the face like this. Bring your awareness to the tightness and tensions around the face. Come one to ten together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let go of the fist. Shake the hands and feel the way of relaxation. That's good. That second round. In order to enhance the relaxation effect, at the end of the ten count, we want to say a certain word. A certain sound that you will associate with peace and relaxation. For instance, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you say, relax. Or, ah. For this exercise, you can also use a squeeze ball. Slightly and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and smile. Kind full body stretching. The first uh, posture I call it the tortoise tap. So in this tortoise, you imagine you're a tortoise and you push your head into the tortoise shell this way. Yeah. So the, for the first part of the practice, which is the mindfulness part, we pay attention to the tightness, the tension, and the sensations around the head and neck. Okay? And to help us to focus, we're going to count from one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then for the kindness part, you let go of the tension in this way. Ah. Yeah. So we go one more time. Okay. Push the head into the potty shell. Pay attention to the tightness, the tensions around the head and eye. To 
help us to focus, we'll count from one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And for the kindness part, you release the tension with a sound of relief this way. Ah. So for each posture, we do it three times. So let's do it one more time. Push the head into the top of the shell. Again, the mindfulness part, pay attention to the tightness sensations around the neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we release the tension. <sighs> So that's the first posture. The second posture, I call it the Superman style. So how do we do that? Okay, for the Superman style, we push our hands to the back, okay, in this way, and a little bit below. Okay, the chest should be forward, and we tilt the head a little bit back. Yeah. So for the mindfulness part, we pay attention to the tightness, the sensations around the neck. Yeah. Okay, and we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let go of the tension. Push the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now the kindness part, we release the tension with a sound of relief and with a smile. <sighs> Okay, let's do the third round. Okay, Superman, push the hand to the back, a little bit down and backward, tilt the head back, feel the tightness, the sensations around the neck. Uh, so that is the mindfulness part. Uh, we can talk to the body, ask for feedback on how the body likes to be stretched. So we can do some micro adjustment uh, to how we like to stretch the body, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we let go of the tension with kindness. Okay, so that's the superman. And the third one is called push the ceiling. So in the push the ceiling style of posture, we could do this. Push up into the back. Yeah. Okay. So for the mindfulness part, feel the tightness, feel the sensations. Okay. And the count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let go of the tension, the kindness. <sighs> Okay, push it again, to the back. Ah, feel the tightness, sensations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now the kindness part, lack of tension, kindness. <sighs> yeah. Okay, push it again, to the back. Ah, feel the tightness, sensations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now the kindness part, lack of tension, the kindness. <sighs> and stretching. 
and we end it by doing a little bit of massage. So we use this hand to massage this part. Here, okay, massage this part. Gently, be gentle, be graceful, okay. Yeah. And this part. Yeah. So massage carefully. And here. Okay. The hand. Okay. And we gently tap to pack up okay. the neck area. Gently tap. Tap the kindness. Yeah. Okay. And so we just tap here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Then we do some rotate the head. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Do the other side as well. One, two, three. Yeah. The next three postures involve relaxing the facial muscles. These postures may not look good cosmetically, but it's definitely very effective for relaxing the facial muscles. So, what are these three postures? We have number one, ah. Number two, e. And number three, o. Oh. Let's get into more detail. The first one involves stretching the facial muscles by making the sound. That's good. Remember, it's not the sound effect that matters. Stretch effect around the facial muscle. The second one involves tensing the muscles around the jaw and the neck by making the sound. Last one, we walk stretching the nose by making the sound. Postures involve tensing and relaxing different groups of muscles in the legs. For the first one, imagine trying to prick a piece of tissue paper with toes in this way. Feel the tightness around this area. And we should count together from 1 to 10. One. Feel the waves of relaxation around the toe. 
let's do it for the other loop. Okay, try to grip this tissue paper, the toes, feel the tightness around the area. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let go. That's good. Now let's do it without tissue paper. Imagine the piece of tissue paper is still there. Grip this tissue paper with the toes. Feel the tightness around the area. And let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let go. Please remember to be gentle with this exercise as it can easily cause muscle cramp. For the next posture, try to elevate the feet and touch the toes in this way. That will produce tension at the area around the calf. Feel the tightness around the calf. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let go. Feel the waves of relaxation around the calf. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let go. Feel the waves of relaxation around the calf. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let go. Feel the waves of relaxation around the calf. For the last posture, try to imagine there's a wall right in front of you. Try to touch the wall with your toe this way so that it produces tension around this area. Feel the tightness around this area. You should count from 1 to 10 together. Please do remember. Gentle and this posture is very easy to get muscle cramp as well. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and tackle and relax. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine, ten, and tackle and relax. Do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and tackle and relax. Okay, so that's mindful body stretching uh, of tensing and relaxing different parts of the body plus uh, massage, tapping and rotating the neck and uh, shoulders. Yeah, uh, I'm sure you have many questions related to the practice. Before I attend to your questions, let me elaborate a little bit more. Uh, it's very important that we do the mindful body stretching mindfully. Uh, there's a big difference, huge difference between mindful body stretching and mindless body stretching. Uh, so this is when the, the definition of mindfulness is very important. Uh, so we need to understand the definition of mindfulness and apply it in mindful body stretching. Ah, then you have the maximum effect of the mindful body stretching uh, exercise. Okay. So for the attention part, remember, as I said earlier, every mindful gym cooler, there's always an attention component. So in this 
exercise, the attention is on the body sensations. Uh, the attention is on the body sensation, the tightness, uh, body sensation. And we, we are doing the counting. The, the counting is not a must, but I find that the counting is useful to help us to focus. Uh, so we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, release. It, it helps us to focus. Uh, if not, if we, we be doing the dancing and stretching, but our mind be wondering what to cook tonight, what should we do after the, the class, then we worry about COVID, worry about a lot, a lot, a lot of things, you know. Uh, so the, the counting helps with the attention. So that's, a, that's the first part, the attention part. Okay. Okay. What the kindness mean in the in the kindness part? Uh, this is very important. Okay, so in kindness part, we actually have to, as we are doing the stretching, we have to thank our body. We need to be grateful to our body. Uh, so we thank our body. We are grateful to our body. Uh, and as we are doing the the, the stretching, uh, we we respect our body. We respect our body, and we ask the body. So we, we sort of communicate with our body and ask our body, hey, how would you like to be stretched? Uh, do, would you like to be stretched harder or softer? Uh, so it's doing a lot of adjustment. Uh, so which is the best method? Actually, there's no best method. I cannot recommend you the best method. You can only give you general guidance. And you have to ask your body as you practice, uh, say thank you to your body, get feedback from your body, respect your body, and ask how you want me to stretch. Uh, so that is the meaning of a uh, day. Okay. Then we have the beginner's mind. The beginner's mind means we encourage you to practice on a daily basis. As you practice, uh, have a beginner's mind, that means be curious, be playful, be adventurous, um, and, and see what works for you. Uh, so the, the, the beginner's mind, there's at least three M, you know, modify, mix, and match. What do you mean by modify? Okay, modify is, of course, we teach you the basic hand posture, but feel free to modify and adjust. You don't have to follow exactly the same. Feel free to modify, okay? Then the second M is mix. What do we mean by mix? Okay, mix means uh, you can mix with your other practice. Uh, for example, I know some of you, 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 you know something, you have been practicing yoga. Feel free to combine this micro body stretching with your yoga practice. Okay, and later we, the, in the lesson two next week, we will teach you on how to do micro breathing. So mixing also mean mixing different micro gym exercises, like mixing the micro body stretching and mixing with micro uh, breathing. Uh, so all those are under beginners part of mix. Okay. Then the third M is match. So you have to match your needs. Uh, so everyone has different needs. Some are using it for sleep problems. Some are using it for uh, anxiety, some are using for panic attack, different, different reasons. So feel free to match it according to your needs. Okay? And some of you may have some back problem. So if you have some back problem, uh, uh, don't torture yourself. So you have to match your need. Maybe you have uh, some injury. So maybe you have to leave that part out. Don't go and uh, uh, torture yourself and cause more injury to the body. And then related to kindness as well. Yeah. So if we can apply all these principles, then we call it a mindful body strategy. If any of these principles are missing, uh, that is not really a, it's not really a mindful body strategy. It could be just body strategy, but not mindful body strategy. Sometimes uh, I use the word kind body strategy. Initially, when I, I, I teach this exercise, but really, I, I use the word kind to body stretching. Uh, the same thing, it's just nice to not just as kindness. Uh, okay, before I, I attend to your question, there are some common, uh, frequently asked questions. Let me go through the common, commonly asked question, then I will go through your specific uh, question. Okay, when should I practice? 
there's no hard and fast rule. I suggest for a start, especially if you are learning this for the first time. Some of you, you are joining this for revision. Uh, some of you are learning for the first time. I suggest if you are joining this for the first time for the next one week, uh, I will suggest you practice at least twice a day. One in the morning and once in, uh, once in the morning and once in the evening. So for a start, okay. How regular? Again, up to you. You want to do three times a day, also can. Two times a day, also can. One time a day, also can. Once in the morning, also can. Once before you go to sleep, also can. Uh, but I suggest for, for for a start, you should try at, at least once or twice a day, at least for this week. Uh, so after this one week, then uh, feel free to adapt, adjust according to your lifestyle. There are another frequently asked questions like, must I practice all the stuff? Because in total, there are 10 postures. Uh, the answer is no, it's not necessary. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, feel free to select the postures that you need. For example, if you experience more of neck and shoulder tightness, just do those uh, the postures related to neck and shoulder. Uh, if you feel more tightness and tension over your face, you just do the REO. Uh, if you feel the tightness more on the lower part of the body, then you do uh, those uh, micro leg uh, stretching. Uh, again, as I mentioned, if you are learning this for the first time, I suggest for this week, uh, at least practice all the 10 postures for you to have a feel of uh, mindful body stretching. After one week, then feel free to adapt according to your needs. Okay. Hmm. I will stop here for QA. Yeah. So you can submit your question with the same method. Go to slide door and then key in T122. Yeah. Okay, let's continue with the rest of the questions. How do we improve okay. mindfulness on those with ADHD? Same thing with the mindful gym exercises. Uh, you can start with mindful body stretching. All right. You start with mindful body stretching. Uh, and then slowly build on it. So we mindfulness training, just like training in gym, uh, you have to start gradually, step by step. You know, straight away go to, to uh, very difficult uh, mindfulness practice. Start with the basic. So mindful body strategy is something very basic. Uh, so train the attention, to put the attention on body tightness, body sensation. Okay. Yeah. Next. Thanks. So the next question is by Amy. Dr. Pang, I have very bad gastric pain when linked to my back and I have no appetite to eat, what mm. method of mindful tools should I use to ease the pain? Good. Amy, mm. mindful body stretching plus mindful breathing. Mindful body stretching plus mindful breathing. So today, you have learned mindful body stretching. Next week, you're going to learn mindful breathing. Uh, then there's a way to combine it. Uh, I, have, uh, I have very sensitive stomach as well. So I use mindful body stretching combined with mindful breathing. Uh, very, very effective. Thanks, Amy. Next. Thanks, Dr. Pang. How to incorporate breathing while doing stretching? It is just a normal way of breathing? Um, no. Okay. So I will, this question is a very advanced question. I should recover in uh, lesson two. But never mind. I'll just give you a, a simple demonstration. Okay, if you combine mindful body stretching and breathing, it is something like this. For example, for the tortoise posture, so I push my head into the tortoise shell this way, so I feel the tightness. Okay, uh, okay. instead of counting from one to counting from one to ten, I drop the counting, but I synchronize with the breathing. So I breathe in, then I breathe out. Breathe in. I breathe in with the nose. Then I breathe out. I breathe in with my nose. Then I breathe out. Okay. The same goes for the other 10 postures. For example, Superman, you can do the same. So you push, breathe in, Superman. Then you breathe out. Okay, on the facial stretching, you do ah. Okay, 
Yeah, that's how you combine mindful body stretching and breathing. Next. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pang. Thank you, Dr. Pang. The next question is by Winnie Lo. What are the three things to do in daily cultivate mindfulness? To daily mm. What mm. are the three things to do? Okay. Daily, uh, to cultivate mindfulness yeah. daily. Actually, there are many, many. There are many, many, many the things to do. I suggest for a start, do mindful body stretching. Okay, how to make it three things? You got mindful body stretching for the head and neck, mindful body stretching for the face, and mindful body stretching for the legs. So three things already. So you start with that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Slow, step by step. Step by step. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Bang. Yeah. The next question by Sham. Yes. Why was the definition of mindfulness modified for Malaysians? Why was it uh, modified for Malaysian? Uh, there are many, many reasons. Okay. One of the reasons is certain words. Uh, for example, in the kabat zings definition, there is this word called non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. Uh, so I try to use uh, this word non-judgmental. I find it very, very, very difficult to explain the, the content. Uh, so people ask how, how not to judge, very difficult. Uh, but somehow for the Americans, uh, I think due to, due to cultural factors, uh, when they use the word non-judgmental, somehow they got it very easy. Uh, but in our population, we try to use the word non-judgmental, a bit susah, you have to explain, 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 a lot of explanation. Uh, so I modify it, instead of using the word non-judgmental, I use the word kindness, kindness, a beginner's mind. So it's one of the reasons. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dr. Pangian Zai, Jimmy. Mm. Are there any physical benefits to mindfulness in addition to all the positive mental benefits? Are there? Uh, yes, definitely. My mindfulness practice has shown to. Yes, I got it. Yeah. So mindfulness practice has been shown to improve physical health plus mental health. Uh, so remember in, in, uh, in part one, uh, there were a few slides on the scientific studies. Uh, actually the studies was for physical health and mental health. Uh, of course there's the mental one, for example, for, for COVID related anxiety. Yeah, for your information, mindfulness practice has been shown to reduce stress and anxiety during the pandemic. They, had, they did studies in Wuhan, they did studies in Italy, they did studies in the uh, US and shown to improve mental health. Uh, that is mental health. Okay? Of course, I'm a psychiatrist. I, I tend to emphasize more on mental health, but it's for physical benefit as well. In fact, uh, when uh, Dr. Kabazin started his MBSR program, initially it was more for physical health. It was for psoriasis, it was for chronic pain. It's later they found it very useful, the extent. Okay, shall we proceed to the next question? I can't see your slides. Okay, next. Next question. Is there any mindfulness program for palliative care patients? Is there any mindfulness program for palliative care patients? Yes, yeah. but not, uh, not by me. There is one uh, physician in UST Malaya Medical Center by the name Dr. Tan Seng Beng. Dr. Tan Seng Beng, uh, in UST Hospital, UM. Uh, he, he's, he's a palliative care physician. So he specializes in the use of mindfulness for palliative care. Uh, so if you're interested, you can Google his name, Dr. Tan Seng Beng. So Google Dr. Tan Seng Beng and mindfulness in Malaysia. Okay. Thanks. Recently, my first mindfulness program, actually just now when I said my first program was conducted among medical students, actually not completely true. Uh, the first one was done in Kasei Hospice for the caretakers. Uh, not, not for the patient, but for the caretakers of... Uh, 
patients with palliative needs. Yeah. Thanks. Next. The next question, is it normal to get muscle cramps while doing the stretches? Yes, it's common. It's common. That's why it's important to do with kindness. Yeah. Important to do with kindness. So mindfulness is remembering to pay attention to the present moment with kindness, beginner's mind, and wisdom. Uh, so be gentle. Be gentle. When you're stretching for the first round, be gentle. Uh, especially you have not been doing for very long. Just like physical exercise. You have not been playing badminton for a long time. You straight away play too hard. Like you get a lot of body aches. Uh, so be gentle. That's the kindness component. Okay, next. Hey, sorry. I accidentally, uh, hmm. is it normal to get a uh, muscle cramp? Oh, sorry, there is a question asked, Dr. Bang. Can we replay the tense posture? Okay, that can one? We replay the tense posture. Okay, no problem. We will send you the link. We will send you the link to the YouTube video. Yes. Yeah, we will send you okay. the link. We also send you the notes as well. We also have the notes form of the 10 posture. We also have a video form. So the okay. video form also got the pictorial uh, form. Okay. Most thanks. important is to practice resources. Uh, uh, video resources, no problem. Pictorial resources, no problem. The most important one is practice, practice, practice. I agree with you. Okay. The next question, Kaifu versus my full stretching. I still can't differentiate. Very good. Very good. Actually, whatever I'm sharing here is mindful stretching, is mindful body stretching. Uh, and mindful body stretching will encompass the entire definition. Uh, the, the paying attention with kindness, with beginner's mind, with wisdom. It's supposed to be that way. However, over the years, uh, when I teach mindful body stretching, I notice a lot of people they apply the stretching without kindness. Uh, so they stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch too hard, then you get a lot of pain. They don't listen to the body. body. They don't respect the body. Uh, so that's why over the years, I, I coined the term kindful body stretching just to emphasize the kindness components of mindfulness. I hope it's clear. Okay. Uh, so if, if you practice the full mindfulness, uh, no problem. If you know by definition, mindfulness includes kindness, uh, then no problem, you're on the right track. Uh, but sometimes we forget, we need to be reminded. That's why we create a term called kindful body strategy, just to emphasize on the kindness part. All okay, right. Good. The last question is, if I count one to 10, hmm. I tend to focus in the counting and not mindful with sensation of the body. Good question. Excellent question. Good question. Excellent question. This is the reason why we say in the my uh, beginner's mind. Beginner mind means modify, mix, and match. So we do match according to your needs. For some people, count attention. For some people, counting actually reduces the attention, it's a distraction. Uh, so which is right, which is wrong. There's no right, there is no wrong. You listen to your body, listen to your body, and that is kindness. You respect the body, you get feedback to the body, that's kindness. Uh, there's also a wisdom component. You listen to the wisdom of your own mind and body. Hmm. Any more? No more, that's all. Uh, very good, very good. Yeah. So I pass back uh, the floor so to you. To the end of the yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, so we have about five to 10 minutes more. Uh, okay, I think there is one more slide under the mindful body stretching. Okay, here. Ah, okay. So in mindful gym program, there is home practice. Ah, so the home practice for this week is the mindful body stretching exercise. That is the main exercise that we introduced to you. So yeah, your role is to practice on a daily basis for the next one day. 
And I strongly suggest as you practice, keep a reflection diary. Keep a diary to make notes. Reflection diary. What do you write in the diary? Uh, this is what I suggest. Okay. Uh, what do you notice in your mindful body stretching practice, in your mindful gym practice? So for this week, it's mindful body stretching. So what did you notice in practice? Which part is helpful? Which part is not helpful? So make notes. Okay, It doesn't mean that everything is helpful. Uh, notice, pay attention, which part is helpful, which part is not helpful. Then make note of the challenges you face. Uh, for example, just now, there was a very good question. If I count... I get distracted. Those are the challenges. Uh, then you modify. Uh, take note of the challenges and also focus on uh, how you adapt. How you adapt the practice to suit your needs. Uh, see how you modify, how you mix and match. Okay? Uh, so that will be your home practice. And also we have one reading assignment. Uh, we have one reading assignment for you related to mindful body stretching. There is an online article on seven common mistakes in mindful body stretching. Uh, so this is the QR code. There's a URL link. Uh, we will send the link to you through the Telegram, our Telegram channel. Yeah. So with that, thank you. Uh, Jasmine, do we have any past participants who are going to share on mindful body stretching practice? No, personally, I think I would like to share with the experience that uh, we encountered just now. Is it okay, Toronto? Mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Okay. Um, just now my phone, my email, my WhatsApp, my Instagram, I think all the social media that the audience can, participants can reach me, they try their best to um, forward me a message that uh, they can't join the session, they can't enter to the event. So the situation was very stressful just now, really. But I was very mindful. I have a lot of unpleasant fe feelings surfacing up at that point of time. But I told myself, what can I do at this moment with the supporting of the mindful gym uh, exercise? Okay, I really can calm myself down at that moment and prioritize what are the things that I need to do. Mm. So, uh, of course, body stretching um, really helped me a lot uh, to relax the body first. Then after that, uh, the knowing, one of the exercise tools that uh, Dr. Pang going to uh, teach us later. And the... Uh, five mindful, mindful vitamins that I took just now. So I quickly sent an email to all the participants to explain to them we encountered the technical issues um, and a brief uh, message to reach them. Then also I cannot, I really cannot afford to uh, reply the WhatsApp message uh, one by one. I just asked them to check email and uh, find out what happens, uh, what are the challenges that we face just now. So uh, I'm very, very grateful. Really, I'm very grateful that uh, I grateful to myself, grateful to my Fuji program, and also grateful to Dr. Pang for uh, giving us or for teaching us such a wonderful exercise. And I can use it to cope with my challenges in life. And that part... Uh, I would really, really um, uh, 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 appreciative, appreciate to the exercise that I learned from my full gym. Not only uh, the challenges uh, that I face in life, not only external issues, it's also my personal uh, uh, mental health issues. So um, if I would uh, have more opportunities to uh, meet you all online, I will share more how do I cope with my depression and anxiety disorder by using the mindful gym tools. Thanks, Dr. Pang. Thanks, everyone. Good. Thanks, Jasmine, for the sharing. Um, There's the question in the chat box, uh, Jasmine. Uh-huh. Question is how to join the telegram. Uh, 
Uh, uh, so that's okay. a very important thing because we just send a lot of things to you all through the Telegram, the video, the notes, uh, a lot of things through Telegram. So how do we join the Telegram? Uh, I will answer the person uh, personally and directly. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, we're going to end the session now. Uh, but if you have more questions, uh, you can continue to ask questions through the, the Slido system. Uh, so the, the Zoom session is going to end now, but the Slido system is still on. Uh, you can still submit your questions. I will answer your questions uh, through the Slido system, or I may answer the question in the next session. Uh, okay, for your friends who missed the session, uh, just let them know that we will we'll work on the recording, I will edit, and uh, send to them as soon as possible.